When you want to do something, I think opportunities come a lot more. If you can get your mind under control, your body will just do the rest. You know I can be one of the best females in the sport. Give me five, ten years, no one will even recognize me. How much you party these days? Uh, okay, so when I... Okay, listen to me. Yeah. So I, I, okay, well, I know I'm fighting for a world title, so I know that like me going out and partying for one night is not worth... Pain is temporary, legacy mm. is forever. Who's the favorite parent? Who's the favorite parent? I can't answer that. Uh, <laughs> what are... Secret little marijuana. things. <laughs> some people, m marijuana is not for them, but some people has really helped when you surround yourself that people that only want you to be successful, you have no other choice than be successful. People say money doesn't buy you happiness, but money, it definitely makes you stressed if you don't yeah. have it. <laughs> have you considered doing OnlyFans? Of course, I've thought about it. You were so hard. To schedule the podcast. <laughs> why? Why? Tell me why. I'm a busy girl. I'm always doing something. I know. I'm sorry. I one way come in Sydney, one way come here. Got something wrong with me. Oh, no, apologies. But we made it. I'm yes, here. we made it. We're here. Ladies and gentlemen, buckle up because today we have another legend on the pod. If you're new here, by the way, my name is Nelson. I'm the host of the Creative Grid podcast, a podcast committed to help creative entrepreneurs become the best possible version of themselves so they can reach success and accomplish all their dreams. And the, we do that through teaching you different life skills and having guests from dif different backgrounds and industries so we can all learn all the tools and the things they, they have learned in order to achieve success in their own lives and careers. So today we have a professional fighter She's the daughter of not just one, but two world champions in Muay Thai. And she actually holds uh, currently the Women's International Boxing Association World Flyweight title. That was a very long title. That is a very long title. <laughs> <laughs> I think I really did a good long. job on that one. So please welcome Jasmine Parr. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm excited. No, thanks for coming. How are you, Jessica? Girl? Um, <laughs> For people that have no idea who you are, can you give us a little bit of a background, a little description of you? Yeah, so I'm Jazan Pa. I'm a fighter of uh, going on 12 years now. I fought since I was eight years old. Uh, both my parents are fighters, my whole family are fighters. We're in a gym in uh, Burley Heads, Boonchi Gym. And yeah, I was a Muay Thai fighter for most of my career, but I've just transitioned into boxing and now I'm a boxing world champion and Australian boxing world champion. Oh. Australian Boxing World Champion. Yeah. Isn't that? No, that doesn't make sense. Australian <laughs> Boxing Champion. <laughs> Australian World yeah. Boxing. Sorry. Yeah, awesome. So what, why do you switch from Muay Thai to boxing now? Um, so originally the plan was to just do Muay Thai for as long as possible. And I've had a few injuries in my career and I'm only... Uh, not even 20 years old yet I'm 20 in two weeks and I've had a hip surgery and I had a problem with my knee and just a few injuries that have kind of just pushed me back a little bit with Muay Thai so I had an opportunity after my last Muay Thai fight to fight for the Australian boxing title and it was kind of hard to say no when it's such a big uh, belt especially in boxing so um, once I did that first fight I'm not gonna lie during my fight camp I was kind of um, hesitant on wanting to do boxing. I didn't think I was a boxer or I liked boxing or I didn't know much about boxing at all. But after my first fight, I was like, oh, I actually really like this. And then I continued to train. And the more I trained and the more I studied and the more I watched boxing, I, I really enjoy it. And now I love it. I'm obsessed. I'm, I love boxing and I'm really excited to see how far I can go in this sport. And I think I can go pretty far because I believe in myself. So yeah. Yes, we're gonna <laughs> get into that mindset part yeah. as well. So, do you do you miss like the tools? Because you have extra tools in Muay Thai, right? Just you have your knees, elbows, that kind of thing. Oh, the definitely. clinch. Like, do you miss those tools, or have you found the transition to boxing a bit more difficult because of not having those tools that you used to? Yeah, it's like it's a bit weird. It's really different because when I thought of boxing, I just thought it was Muay Thai without the legs, knees, kicks, elbows and all that. But um, there's a lot to boxing, like there's a lot of footwork and there's a lot more things you kind of have to worry about, like really moving your head, whereas Muay Thai would kind of be a bit more walk forward. But now I've got to really change my angles. I have to use my legs and in and out and make sure I'm not tripping over my feet. Like there's so many more things that I have to worry. Like, no, not so many more things, but... I have to think a completely different mindset. It's like mm -hmm. so different, which I thought it wouldn't be as different. Mm -hmm. But now I've really gone into box. That's why I've really fallen in love with it because it's like a whole new sport. Of course, I miss kicking. I miss 
elbows. I love elbows. I miss the clinch and I miss doing all that kind of stuff. But it's just like a different path now. And I mm-hmm. kind of remind myself like I love Muay Thai. Muay Thai will be my one love. But I'm going on a new journey now. And I'm just got to learn all the new ways. I'm just realizing I didn't mention we did a documentary together. So yes. I shot a documentary for you with Vibes Creative. It's on YouTube and it has over 26,000 views at the moment. It's called Born to Fight. Um, so you should definitely check that out if you want to know more about Jassy. But like you start, you had your first fight at eight years old. And your dad said on the document that like you were pushing for it, you were asking for it. Yeah, yeah. How, is is that just because like how was the dynamic growing with two world champions and people that all they do it's it's Muay Thai. Your parents yeah. that's all they have ever done. So how how was that environment growing up in the household? Yeah, it's very different to like most children, I guess. And I didn't realize. Well, of course I knew that it was like a bit different lifestyle to other kids. Mm. But as I've gotten older, I'm like, oh, yeah, that is really different. Like, my, <laughs> my, my yeah. kids didn't go to school yeah. and then go straight to the gym every day. Yeah. Like, that was my life. I yeah. went to school from 9 to 3 p.m. After 3, dad picks me up. We get in the car. We go straight to the gym. There's kids' class. I'm, I normally train. If Well, this is when I was a kid. Do the kids' class. And then I stay at the gym until mom and dad talk class. Then we go home and have dinner. Like, at like eight o'clock or like I have a sleepover at a friend's house and it's like, oh, we have dinner at six o'clock. I'm like, well, my parents are normally teaching class at six o'clock. I'm like, it's very, it's yeah. very different. But yeah. um, yeah, it's, I feel very lucky and very like blessed that that was my life. But it was very, very different. And like, they never pressured me into training or they never pressured me into mm-hmm. fighting or anything like that. I've always wanted to do it. And when I didn't want to fight, I tried out soccer and I tried out dancing and I tried out other sports, but I never enjoyed it as much as I did um, martial arts so yeah I I really like figured it out on my own that this is what I want to do and it's the same for my little brother he wasn't training for he had a couple fights I think he had seven or eight fights when he was a bit younger and then he wasn't training for a while my parents didn't push him and now he's found his love for jiu-jitsu and he's like he watches it every day all his friends do jiu-jitsu we just went to Sydney and we just gone to Melbourne and we he went to the worlds in America like when you want to do something, I think opportunities come a lot more. Mm -hmm. So I think us figuring out for ourselves that this is what we really want to do has really worked out in our advantage. Mm -hmm. Jesse, side note, it's such a savage. I know. He has such a promising future and he's getting so big. I was telling Angie, like, I, I can't believe it. I met him, what, like, uh, we, we have known each other for, like, a year and a half, maybe two yeah, years Yeah, maybe now. two years. Yeah, and he has grown so much. When I met him, he was way smaller than And, like, than a there. kid. Now he's going into a man. It yeah. It is freaky. Yeah, and, it, and it's, it, it's mind-boggling to me that he's only 14 or something like that, right? He's 14. Like, he still has so much more room for growth. I know. He's got so much room for growth. It's ridiculous. And, like, you can see his little face is yeah. changing. I'm yeah. like, oh, my God god you're like a man now yeah, yeah. but it's it's good and i think it, it's yeah it, it's good it's, he's it's getting like, all hairy oh, as well. it's freaking me <laughs> out i'm like oh, oh i don't want to know what's going on <laughs> yeah no that's funny as so who's the favorite parent Who's a favorite bird? I can't answer that. Uh, come on, tell me here. I won't tell them. I won't tell them. You won't tell them. Someone else will. No, I do not have a favorite parent. There's no favorite parent. Otherwise, I'd I'd find out about from the other parent. <laughs> Who's the favorite sibling? No. I, I say, oh, no, I can't actually say that. Oh, I, uh, always, yeah, I, I, I always say to Gemma, I say, you're my favorite sister. She goes, I'm your only sister. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. So... From training with like your parents, what have you learned from Wayne Parr and what have you learned from Angie Parr? Um, so from my dad, I think I've definitely uh, learned a lot of like more the technical side, like pushing in and using my legs to get in and out and my power. Whereas my mom, like I feel like like my mom, she teaches me a lot of stuff as well. But I feel like my dad teaches me more like the skills my mom teaches me like the resilience and the Mm. mental strength like my mom pushes me until I break which is like when I was younger I was like oh my god I hate training with you but as I've gotten older I'm like okay this is what I need I need like the yin and the it's like a good cop bad cop like my Mm -hmm. dad's like okay Jazzy what we're gonna do we're gonna do this where my mom's like all right Jazzy this is what we're doing like this we're doing this and she's very like firm yeah when my dad's like yeah if you want to do that like <laughs> it's very nice yeah. and very like calm yeah. and my mom like my mom's nice too but she's very like 
um, like firm and strict, which is like, I think it's good. I think it's a good balance. Yeah, I, 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 I've witnessed some of those moments yeah. with Gemma as well. Like yeah. I can see how she's the one pushing yeah. like the mental barrier and the yeah. mental boundaries, whereas your dad is like the technicality yeah, yeah. side of things. Is that correct? Definitely. Yeah. So what, like they're, they're world champions. Yeah. How much pressure do you have to become and, and get multiple world champion titles? Um, I actually feel like for me getting a lot of world, world titles, there's not much pressure. I don't think my dad wants me to beat him. <laughs> 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 my, dad, my dad's very competitive. <laughs> and I've said it my whole, like my whole childhood growing yeah. up and interviews and everything. I said, when I get older, I want to have more belts than my dad. And I see his face. He's like, oh, <laughs> more, more belts than me, yeah. really. But I think hopefully, well, one day, I'm mm. only 20. I got my first world title and I hopefully mm. we'll get the ball rolling. Mm. And we'll see. We'll see what happens. There's, I, I'm very eager to um, just push myself to my best ability so hopefully that's at the top that's awesome how how's the lifestyle of a professional fighter like describe a no a, a normal day of your week at okay. what time do you wake up what's your routine what 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 do you do to prepare like what are they describe that to us um yeah so it's pretty hectic so mm. i'll wake up in the morning normally about six o'clock mm. i don't really like waking up early, that, to, to be honest. Mm. But I wake up at 6 o'clock and then I'll be at the gym. I only live about 10 minutes from my gym, so I'll be there at oh, 6.30. Good, yeah. So I'll wake up at like 6, quickly have a little bit to eat, mm -hmm. and then I'll run straight away after, mm. over, which is probably not a good thing to do. <laughs> but wake up 6, go to the gym 6.30. I'll go for a run. After I go for a run, that's about 6, 7, seven kilometers, seven, maybe eight, mm. seven, eight kilometers. After that... I'll come back to the gym. I'll do shadow boxing, pad work, do my sit-ups, do my push-ups. Other than that, I'll do a few PTs normally or I'll teach a class. Mm -hmm. I'll go home. I'll refuel. I'll eat. I'll have a nap. I always have a nap in the day during fight camp because mm -hmm. lets your body How recover. How long for? Uh, usually about 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. So I'll sleep for about an hour and a half. That's I'll a proper sleep. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> like so did yeah. you know we're actually supposed to have two sleeps? It's it's like scientifically proven we're meant to have sleep one, sleep two. Yeah. So, so it's, it's what, very what time are you having that nap? About one one o'clock, one thirty. One o'clock. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I wake up about three. Mm -hmm. Um. Then I'll go back to the gym in the afternoon. I'd normally do a couple privates. Mm -hmm. Uh. So like one on one sessions, and then I'll train myself from. Well, not train myself. I'll train in the fighters class from four to six thirty. So that's mm -hmm. two and a half hours. I do about two in the morning two in the afternoon mm -hmm. two and a half in the afternoon and then eat dinner go to sleep what time do you go to bed normally uh like 9 30 10 yeah cool and then wake up at six yeah so you usually get around eight hours of sleep mm. or something yeah yeah you're try and definitely get eight hours sleep yeah i that's i think the single best thing i have done for myself in the past year like yeah. nailed in down my sleep schedule yes. since i started getting like eight hours consistently I recover faster. I rarely get injured. I feel sharper in yeah. the morning as well. Just well rested. And I, I don't have the need for a nap. It's different, yeah. obviously, for you because yeah. you're training way more than what I am yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like I, I'm, I'm sweet all day. By 8 p.m., I'm already like giving up. Yeah. I'm like, okay. I'm, I'm a little bit tired now. Yeah. What time do you wake up? At 5. 5, yeah. Yeah, so usually I'd, I try to be in bed by 8 and yeah. like i might try to read a little bit or whatever just finish with like posting sometimes as well um and then by 8 30 ideally i'll be already asleep but yeah. before nine for sure yeah yeah okay yeah that that has been massive like yeah. I'm, I'm my body's always fine it's good. always ready to go so that's really good yeah. well i definitely know when i party and when i go out mm. and i don't and the lack of sleep was the worst like mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. lose sleep you feel like shit for days mm. can i swear on this yeah yeah, yeah okay <laughs> Please <do>. okay <laughs> so like how much you party these days uh, okay so when i'm okay listen to me yeah. so <laughs> I, I, <laughs> that's listen, your camera right listen to me <laughs> so i train and i fight like majority of the year so say for instance last year mm. Oh, I can't actually say how many fights I had last year because that's TVA because it'll be on the Challenger show. Oh, okay. So okay, it's okay, okay. Uh, confidential, but yeah. I had... Okay, within six months, mm -hmm. I'll say what I could have had. I could have had between two and five fights within mm -hmm. six months, mm -hmm. which is a lot. Mm -hmm. So I could have had three fights, four fights, or five, so you don't know. Yeah. But um, I had a lot within six months, which is... 
back to back training you feel like you are in the army that's that same routine every single day for six months mm -hmm. so i had pretty much like no really recovery time or rest so by the time i got to christmas and by the time i the time i finished my last fight i was like okay i need a break i need mm -hmm. a rest and i need to recover but my rest and recover was me socializing and hanging out with my friends so mm -hmm. usually during the year like i only party like a couple months like i'll party like two months maybe three months out between the whole year but barely mm -hmm. even three months maybe mm -hmm. like a couple like i don't party every day either so mm -hmm. like every other week i'd go mm -hmm. out but like not very often because i'm always in training camp or fight camp so it, it's good i like mm -hmm. the strict lifestyle of being in fight camp because mm -hmm. it doesn't give me the um like extra time of i mean like to socialize and party mm -hmm. with my friends and waste lots of money and mm -hmm. binge drinking and binge eating so mm -hmm. but when i do have the time i like to do it like properly so i'm very go hard or go home mindset <laughs> it's probably not good so when i'm training i'm in i'm yeah. full 100 percent. when i party i'm in yeah. full 100 percent. it's yeah pretty well but it's good how do you deal with the social pressure of seeing like your friends partying especially because you're you're fairly young like yeah. I, I, when i was 20 21 i was just partying all the time so like uh, what's the pressure you have right now of seeing your friends going er out every weekend and all this stuff and you're like i have to wake up tomorrow every yeah. to train and all this it's stuff. very hard it's, well it is hard it's very tempting but the real it, the reward is better than like the risk mm -hmm. so it's like me with my last fight and everything like it's like okay well i know i'm fighting for a world title so i know that like me going out and partying for one night and having mm. fun for one night is not worth it's like oh my god there's a saying and i can't remember what it is but it's like oh pain is temporary legacy mm. is forever like mm -hmm. the, it, it's definitely worth it and i can I, it, it, it doesn't really like bother me that much, mm. but like sometimes of course I'm like, damn it, I wanna, I wanna be where you are. I got, <laughs> I got a mad promo, that looks really yeah, fun. But yeah. look, I've got the world ahead of me and I got time on my yeah. side, so it's okay. I yeah. know it'll be worth it. Yeah, no, and I think once you make that click of like realizing like, look, this is this is just a night out, you know, yeah. it'll be the same as the other ones. Yeah, they might be a little bit more fun about, you know, my friends uh, will make me laugh or whatever, we'll get drunk, but that's it then you go back to yeah. life you know and i know like how f like shit i feel after like yeah. being on a night out or yeah. something like that like you feel so terrible so like for yeah. me to have to train the next day is like nearly impossible so yeah. i definitely don't party like yeah. anytime near a fight camp otherwise i'll train like like shit yeah <laughs> that's not worth it yeah that's the other thing you you not a chance you will perform your, your routine yeah. everything is out of whack you're losing sleep you probably ate some freaking kebab or some, <laughs> yeah. some something dirty you're all night. yeah like your yeah. guts and everything is like it's just not worth it during fight camp or fight time so yeah what are secret little things that you do that people maybe don't know or underestimate that have made like a massive impact in your fighting career <laughs> i'm like oh god what can i say yeah marijuana <laughs> <laughs> seriously <laughs> smoke weed every day yeah. no, um, <laughs> no during a fight camp i won't like i won't usually smoke or anything mm. but i do like edibles and mm. um medicinal i actually have medicinal marijuana mm. so one of my sponsors it's called relief it's in cool and gutter mm. mm. and I've seen uh them actually. yeah, I've seen so the story, yeah they have a dispensary and you can call your doctor so um i can i'll actually put the link in my mm. bio yeah, in my yeah, instagram sure. because you can find out, like some people, m marijuana is not for them, but some people has really helped. I know there is a lot of research for people with anxiety, depression, ADHD, um, uh, PTSD. Mm -hmm. And for some people it doesn't work. And of course it's like anything, life is not a one size fits all. So mm -hmm. if it works for you, you can call you my uh, call the doctor or that's in the link in my bio <laughs> and yeah. find out if it's worth, worth it for you. But yeah, I definitely think it's great. It helps me go to sleep at night. I don't, mm -hmm smoke weed in the day or anything mm -hmm. or um smoke excessively but mm -hmm. I, I like a little bit before i go to bed mm -hmm. and I, I have a really good sleep and i think i think medical marijuana is great has it helped you mainly with the sleep or have you noticed like any other area that has been improved um mainly my sleep i do i was getting a lot of anxiety when i just like but that revolves obviously all around a lot of other things mm -hmm. but um, i'm not as anxious and mm -hmm. Um, the deaf the sleep is like the best thing for me because like mm -hmm. I know if I don't have it like mm -hmm. not that I rely on it or anything but if I do 
have it and when I don't, I notice my sleep is a lot better. Mm. Like I can sleep on the freaking concrete and have a good sleep, like <laughs> fine. But if I have a little bit of like marijuana, I do notice a massive change. Yeah, cool. Um, is there any mental practices or mindset practices that you do? Um, I used, I was doing yoga a lot and I thought mm. yoga was fantastic um, as well as just like, my psychologist called it mindfulness so not so much um because my mind is very mm. it's very fast mm. there's lots going on in this mm. little ticker mm. up here <laughs> so we don't call it meditation because meditation is too like it makes you have to think too slow so like mm. mindfulness just being like present in where i am because mm. i was getting a lot of um what is oh, it wasn't called dissociation it was derealization mm. where like i feel like i'm here mm -hmm. but I feel like kind of, like I'm kind of in a dream. So I had yeah, that right. a while ago, probably when we did the documentary. So I was getting oh, it. Really? I was getting yeah. it a lot um, during just like like random times, like when I talk about it. So I've actually got it right now because I just. Yeah. It. So when, when I talk about it, it's are like, you tripping? Are you I'm, here? I'm tripping myself out because <laughs> yeah. when, I, when I talk about it, like I feel like I'm here, but my it's like my mind is my body, like my soul or something is different. Like it's so weird. So I think of like. What's green in the rooms? So like the tree's green. There's green on your shirt. Um, there's green on your computer. Like I just present myself, mm -hmm. and like as soon as I start doing that, I'm like, okay, like I know. Is it just I the color green or here. no? Whatever. Whatever. So like just distracting my mind and being mm -hmm. like, no, I actually am here. Like I can feel this table and I can feel this, but like it, it's hard to explain. So I was getting that a lot during mm -hmm. my fight camps. I think because when I'm when I'm like overtired, mm -hmm. my body and your mind is a bit more scattered because mm -hmm. you're exhausted. Mm -hmm. So you get mentally exhausted as well. Mm -hmm. So definitely doing like mindfulness stuff and like being present in the moment and journaling. Journaling helps mm -hmm. a lot. I was manifesting and journaling a lot, especially for my last fight, being like, no, I deserve this. I'm I'm worthy of doing this. And I'm worthy of being a champion and really believing in myself in that kind of sense. So I think your mind, if you can get your mind under control, your body will just do the rest. Mm -hmm. So that's been my biggest struggle, I think, is mm. my mindset and my mind space. But it's definitely getting better. What what kind of things have you manifested in the um, past? Money. I mm. love money. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like, Same. Just, just like, like yeah. not money where I'm like, oh, I want money, like freaking crabs off of the yeah. uh, spongebob money 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 yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but i'm yeah. like where like financial freedom almost where i'm just yes. like i don't have to stress yes. about like oh can i do this can i do that yes. oh i don't know i don't have enough money like that's yeah. what and i'm not obviously rich enough where i can just be like yeah give me that give me this yeah. but like i feel comfortable now where i actually haven't really worked in the last four months since i went mm -hmm. overseas to do the reality show that i just did but like obviously now i'm just trying to get back in a routine of like still getting income coming through but yeah just not having this like stress about money because mm -hmm. that people say money doesn't buy happiness but money definitely doesn't buy like it, it definitely makes you stress if you don't yeah. have it like i yeah. know what it was like having zero money and like now i have money coming in regularly it's like okay no i feel mm -hmm. secure and i feel like i can do whatever so mm -hmm. and of course like me being successful in my career no injuries i have to manifest no injuries because i'm always injured my finger mm -hmm. i've just had to pull out of my last fight because i can't make a fist in my glove like where i need to make a fist in my glove wow. because that you have to punch like yeah. of course it's a finger i'm like oh it sounds mm -hmm. like a shit excuse but i only have two weapons in boxing i've got my right hand and my left hand mm -hmm. and if i don't have one of them it kind of makes a big difference so mm -hmm. my opponent's team's not really that happy with me and it's a bit uh, of drama and that because i've had to pull out of the fight but You know, I'm 20 years old. I got my whole career ahead of yeah, me. I have yeah. to focus on my health mm -hmm. and my health is my number one priority. So yeah, definitely manifesting no more injuries. I'm sick of yeah. injuries. They yeah. always come in the way, but yeah. what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So yeah, I don't, I don't know uh, how much do you write besides the journal. For example, if you, if you look at my toilet, I have a uh, freaking sticky notes on the mirror yeah. and things like that. And I try to always do as well before bed or sometimes in the morning as well. Just start reinforcing the ideas in my mm. head of like, I'm strong. Yeah. I'm unbreakable. I'm, I'm going to be. I'm a, a, so I, cha I did a slight change as well because I said I, I, I will be a millionaire before 35. Yeah. But in reality, I already feel like a millionaire. Mm. I, like I'm doing everything that most people that I have talked to that are currently half the things that I want, you know, financial freedom, lots of money, whatever. 
already have even better habits than some of them. So I'm like, yeah. in my head, it's like, I'm already a millionaire. It's just I haven't manifested yet yes. in, in this realm. Kind of yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. I understand exactly what you're saying. And I think that's so true. Like, and being very, like, gratitude, that is a mm -hmm. massive mm -hmm. thing in my life at the moment. And I've got really good people in my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm very grateful for that. And they're all helping, like, just being grateful for the things that we do have. Like I have a mm. roof over my head mm -hmm. and I have my family and I got good friends mm -hmm. and I do have money coming in and mm. I'm eating every day, whatever mm. I want basically. So mm. yeah, life's good. And I think people really um, skip over the fact that like, oh, I need to wake up, work, make mm -hmm. money, go mm -hmm. home, mm -hmm. buy a house, have kids, get married. And it's oh, like, but what is, what's the point? What's <laughs> yeah. the point of like working your life away for what when you don't have yeah. a life to live? Yeah, that's that's why I I love meeting people like you as well. That they're pursuing exactly what they want to be mm. pursuing, and they love the thing they do because that's the one thing that will make the world a little bit better. Yeah, it's not you being trapped in a job you hate or in a relationship that you're not happy with, and you're too scared to leave, or having a group of friends that are all losers like. Is you sitting down and making a decision of what do you want to do in life? What do you want to get? What do you want out of this floating yeah. rock in space? You Seriously. Know? And then when you look at it from the bigger picture, I think people don't realize like mm -hmm. life is whatever you make of it. And life mm -hmm. is so simple if you make it simple. But if you mm -hmm. make it hard, it's going to be very hard. So, mm -hmm. yeah, just realizing that like. You can do whatever you want if you want it. If you want it yes. bad enough, it will happen. Yes, exactly. That's the other thing. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Right? Yes. The minute you, you make that click and, and yeah. understand that, like anything is possible, is, sometimes it's not exactly what you imagine it to be. So maybe let's say someone wants to be a professional fighter, but they're already 30 or something like yeah. that. But still, you can make maybe a YouTube channel out of fighting. And mm. just talk about fighting. Yeah. Or maybe you can become the coach of someone that is be going to become a world champion. You're like, there's always like a twisted way. There's always of a way, of, of course. And I like, it, it's actually wild. And it's I'm so glad that I actually have a lot of people like you and myself mm -hmm. that are like, they realize that there's so much more to life. You can do whatever you mm -hmm. want because mm -hmm. pe a majority of the world is so narrow minded and like don't even believe that yes. like this lifestyle is even possible. Like I can basically do what I want during the day. Like if I'm not in a fight camp, like I can do whatever I want and I'm so blessed that I can live that life. And I'm so like happy with myself that I've realized this at such a young age. Like you don't need to work nine to five and mm -hmm. want to freaking, I don't know, like just get married, have a house, that lifestyle. Yeah, like yeah. thinking about that yeah. makes me like, <gasps> Like, <laughs> but some yeah. people are happy with that and yeah, sure yeah. that can which be which is what, fine which is fine yeah. that can be what they want to do yeah. but like a lot of people that think like if i say outside the box it's just kind of backfired us saying you can do whatever you want <laughs> you think outside the box yeah yeah but yeah it's so true yeah and, and the thing is like until you get exposure to people that are doing these things like i um, until I found that YouTube was a thing, that yeah. there were people making a living by making videos and yeah. stuff like that. that. I always thought that, that is crazy. Like when it made click in my head, like this guy films himself and he's making money out of this. How is that possible? Yeah. And he's living like a awesome lifestyle and all this stuff. And I, I, don't, I think I told you, like I, I, I was a dentist. Yes. I started dentistry back home, you know, and only because I got put out of that bubble of what everyone was everyone was doing the same everyone was trapped in the freaking matrix in the freaking it's system the matrix. You know? yes <laughs> you know, like everyone was trapped in there back yeah. home you know they're all following what the 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 system around them is telling them to do like you need to get a professional job you need to become like a, a dentist doctor lawyer engineer otherwise you're nobody you'll never make enough money whatever like and suddenly you realize there's there's people that have Five hundred thousand dollars for a car yeah. out there. Yeah, they, no doctor is making that amount of money for yeah. a car or whatever. You know, like or or no dentist as well. Like there, there's people that have managed to escape the system. And when yeah. like when I started to find out, like how do they do this? Like how 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 there's people making a living with what they love, and then realizing like anyone can do it. Of course, anyone can do it yeah. if you really love what what you do. If you find that thing and 
just stick to it for a long period of time and work hard and you know you have to sacrifice or compromise in some areas you can't be partying all the time yeah. you can't be derailing yourself you can't probably have the group of friends that are all being losers and yeah. are all part of the system because guess what you get if you have five friends that they're all trapped in there you'll be the six yeah that's exactly. a fact that's a fact so i had to cut like my entire circle and just reprogram my brain to yeah. what it was possible and six years later it has paid off yeah so, exactly yeah and the system doesn't want anyone to know this this is like yes. these are the deep deep secrets yeah. of like oh yeah. you can have a normal life and do whatever yeah. you want yeah. but they don't want you to know that yeah. Yeah. and like if you follow me on instagram you know how open i am about the government i like mm -hmm. i mm -hmm. highly dislike oh is it Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. that's fine, that's fine. Like, so, I highly dislike mm -hmm. the system. And it's sad because I have to ask if I can talk about this because they censor us when you say these certain mm -hmm. words. You're not allowed mm -hmm. to say certain mm -hmm. words. And if you do, oh, you're in um, Instagram jail, you're yeah. in Facebook jail. Like, yeah. they don't want people yeah. to know that the world, like, the world is your oyster. You can do yeah. whatever you want, but they don't want people to know that because they it's a system that, that the government's created. And, yeah, it's sad. When, when, when you go down the rabbit hole, mm -hmm, it's like... Mm -hmm. You can't go back. There's people that definitely like were the architects of yeah. that to keep everyone 100%. just poor and and working for the system yeah. and all these things. So, like, if you because there's one thing, it's almost, like the movie Matrix is so good to explain yeah. those things. It blew my mind when I saw it because I saw it not not long ago, like maybe eight months ago. Or something oh wow! Like that. Yeah, yeah. So I've never seen it, and when I saw, it, I'm like. Of course, <laughs> this is the system. Yes, this is real. I know. This is not a movie. And you know yeah. what's so funny? They make movies out of this, almost like a mockery. Yeah. It's almost like, a, this yeah. is what we're doing yeah. to you. Yeah. But we're going to make it a movie so it seems so like out of touch with reality yeah, that that's yeah. actually reality yeah and it makes people like oh like as if that would happen that seems so crazy but yeah. that's literally our life yeah and it, and you know uh, one that always s s stuck with me since i watched the movie is that you know when neo gets out of the like the matrix and morpheus is just talking to him about the matrix and all this stuff he explains to him that the people that are almost like to attach to the matrix will fight to defend it yes like, even if you show them like hey look yes this is where you are that's yeah. reality and this is where you're trapped this yeah. is why they keep you there like they're too scared to take the risk yes you know they're so okay i know yeah we could, we could talk about this for hours yeah. so i that's exactly it and i've tried and as i've gotten older and i'm only 19 going on 20 mm -hmm. like so i feel so young so sometimes when i have to tell people this stuff I don't want to say that they're dumb or not. Like they're yeah. like I have you can't you can't argue with stupid people yeah. and like in the I can't say that in a, any other way. That's mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. the way they, it is. It, it's it's that they're ignorant. It, to they're it. ignorant and yeah. they don't want to know the truth. They don't mm -hmm. want to actually know what's happening in the world because it scares them and mm -hmm. it's scary. Mm -hmm. But that I I like personally being aware with what's going on and mm -hmm. I like knowing that. The world is a little fucked up, yeah, but yeah. it's the world we're living in. So I can yeah. either be afraid and hide in a corner mm, and work nine mm, to five and mm. do all that like stuff that I don't want to do and be miserable. Or I have this one life that I've got given mm -hmm. and make the most of it. Yes. So I rather just know the truth. Okay. Yep. That's the truth. But what can I do about it? Mm -hmm. I'll just, I like to share my knowledge online and on Instagram. What mm. of certain things people can mm. take it or people can leave it. And mm. I have a lot of, most of my following, they agree with me mm. with a lot of the stuff that I talk about mm -hmm. and, I'm not. I'm not as bad as what I used to be. Beginning of the beginning of the pandemic, I was like next level of, the only thing of like, I was like bah, bah, bah. <laughs> I was like, look at this, look at this, yeah. and then people would continue to argue with me, and I was like, yeah. they just don't get it, yeah. and they don't want to get it, yeah. and that's where I had to be like, okay, I'm at peace now with myself. Where yeah. if I bring this conversation up with someone, they don't agree with me, that's it, and that's fine. I don't care. Don't, yeah, it's, don't even it's waste not. It's time. not worth yeah. me yeah. and wasting my energy. Yeah. So when I have like-minded people, it's great. And I love speaking mm, to people mm. that are like-minded like me. Mm. But if you don't, that's fine too. I'm happy for you to live your life however you want. And yeah. I'll live my life however I want. But the, ta the thing is normally, so if I'm saying like, I'm happy for you to live your life. They're, they're normally so mad at the fact that I can live my life that yeah. it's a problem what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, well, with the vaccine situation, people are like, yeah. Vac uh, people that wanted mm -hmm. to get the vaccine they're like well you're gonna die you're you're you, i hope you die because you don't get it and you're gonna get covid and your whole How family extreme, yeah. and that yeah. where i'd be like 
I just don't want to get it. Yeah. I don't care if yeah. you get it, but I don't want to get it. Yeah. But they'd be like, yeah, well, you're going to die. Yeah. Well, I was like, I... And if you get it, you should be protected. Uh, so yeah. there's nothing to so, fear, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, so yeah. what's what's the problem? Yeah. But it's like, I, I think people like us are so okay with everyone doing whatever they mm. want. They get mm. caught up and aren't happy that you're living the life. It's like a jealousy yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And it's... Because they see reflecting yeah. in themselves and they see like, oh, this guy is so brave to pursue yeah. this thing and I am i don't have the balls for no, that. Exactly. I'm here trapping my job. And when I tell people, I tell everyone these days. Cause I, and one of the people I heard talking about this was Conor McGregor. Yeah. It, like just speaking like, hey, you need to speak things into existence. Yeah. Like you need to tell people what you're going to do and what you're going to become and all these things. It's not enough to keep it for yourself. Some people say like, oh, don't tell anyone like what you're working on and, and that type of stuff. These days, I switch it off. Like I tell every neighbor in here knows I'm going to be a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like everyone. And, and in that way, they're putting, they're it put, um, I have some accountability yeah. to it. Because they always check. They're like, hey, how's work going? How's, how's money? How are these things? I'm like, yeah, everything's going to plan. Everything's yeah. sweet. And you know, but it keeps me on track. Yeah, good. Because everyone's expecting it. I recently someone that came to me he's like she she was like oh are you a millionaire yet because i told her like four years ago or something like oh i'm on my way to become a millionaire yeah i'm gonna be this i'm gonna be that like i told him everything and she came to me che to check so it's been years right and she's like oh like are you a millionaire yet because and it put me into perspective like oh I'm still on track. That's yeah, awesome. Because yeah, yeah. if she would have asked, are you a millionaire? And I completely gave up. And I'm like, oh, look, it's not possible. That's when I, I'll yeah. become a loser. You know? Of course, of course. Yeah. Right now, I'm just like, oh, great. You know, yeah. someone else that is keeping track like, of I'm, this. I'm you on know? the way. And I can see the progress. I'm like, look, it can take me five years. It can take me one year, 10, 20. I'm ready for anything. Yeah. I'm going to die trying. Yeah, of course. That's and would you rather die trying than doing nothing at all? Yes. 100%. Yeah, that like literally that this there's no greatest achievement other than like being okay with die trying. Yeah. That 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 in that way, if I die tomorrow, even if it happens tomorrow and they play the movie of my life and they're like, <laughs> Hey, this is what you were doing, this is what you accomplished, this is where you were wanted to get, but you didn't get there. I will be so fulfilled knowing that you know what? I tried. Yeah. I was trying. I did yeah. my best. I wasn't trapped on a job that I hate. I didn't have any questions of like, what if, what if I would have quit my job back then? Yeah. Or, you know, like I know I tried. Yeah. And that's what matters. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And that's exactly what matters because I, I agree with you. I feel the same way. Like if I had to die tomorrow, I'd be like, okay, well, I did my best and I tried mm -hmm. everything that I wanted to do. And I try not to waste any moments. If, like any little opportunity comes out, yeah, I'm going to try and do it and mm -hmm. give it my best shot. So yeah. it's good. Talk to us about money. In here we speak a lot of business, money, financial freedom, because I'm trying to help people that just like us want to, you know, stay out of the matrix and yeah. kind of make a living with what they love and all these things. There's always like... It, I'm always curious to see how are people making money in different industries? What plans do they have? What systems do they have currently? So what are the ways in which you're making money right now? Yeah, so uh, right now I'm so, I still have shirts for sale from like my fight. I get paid from my fights, like obviously. Mm -hmm. I, I fight professionally. I don't fight for free. <laughs> um, so I like my main income is fighting. Um, mm -hmm. Normally I was doing client, like training people, clients. I was doing about 23, 24 clients a week, which is quite a lot. Like, mm -hmm. but then it kind of got too much. Yeah. Where now I'm just like, I, I, I love training people, but I think I just needed to back off a little bit. And like I said, I haven't worked since before I went overseas. So I haven't done any private sessions uh, for like four months now. But um, I'm very lucky I got sponsors, so that income comes in um, monthly because mm -hmm. I have people that believe in me. Mm -hmm. So sponsors, like, people are like, oh, sponsorship's a waste of money. Like, I don't want to... But it helps me, and then mm -hmm. it also helps them as well. So, like, mm -hmm. I will try and promote my sponsors' businesses as much as I can, mm -hmm. and they believe in me. They believe that I'm going to be successful, and then mm -hmm. eventually give it a couple of years i'll be finding in madison square garden yeah. and i'll be making millions and their freaking logo is going to be on my yeah. shirt yeah. and on my flag and i'm helping represent that it's like help me help you mm -hmm. so yeah. i think um having a good support system around you is great and as an athlete like we need sponsors to survive mm -hmm. we like mm -hmm. we can't fight every month mm -hmm. and be normal yeah. <laughs> like it, it's hard to fight 
super regularly, especially when you're a professional. So having the belief system, my sponsors, my team, making merch. Um, mm. I was doing my online business, but mm. the this is the thing with technology. Well, I can't mm. rely on technology. Sometimes it things happen and it mm. falls through. So that is getting rebuilded up and that's we'll get hopefully in the next six months yeah. will be bigger and better than ever and so what what happened with the that's the training the course. Syst- yeah. yeah the training yeah. the whole system mm. of the um like the, the platform ex- yeah, yeah the platform that they use they were mm. doing like a reboot yeah and so there's like 10 different businesses under this one platform that they're using does that make sense yeah okay and the whole system is down oh and it's no. been down for like three months so i've refunded all of my um clients yeah. and i've like just let everyone go back and do their own thing and hopefully when it comes back it's just going to be bigger and oh, better than ever I'm so ho- annoying. it's so frustrating and yeah. I, I like i talk about this a lot like with my mom and my family like we can't rely on technology for everything because yeah. sometimes like they're trying to make our society cashless and mm. like um and it's like no we we need cash we need mm. what if the atm machine's broken what if the card machine's broken mm. like my business is down so it's like that you got to have other ways around it. So luckily yeah. I can train people still yeah. in real life. In real and life, like yeah. I can, I still have a lot of income coming through, which is great. And I'm surviving like more than fine. Yeah. But um, hopefully within the next six months, I'll be bigger and better than ever. But, yeah, cool. but uh, I'm, I'm saying positive. I, I feel very optimistic. And I think yeah. I, I, after this, it shouldn't happen again. Yeah. It really shouldn't happen that's again. That's so annoying. Yeah. But that's like, very and, frustrating. And it, that's, it, it, it's rare that happens, but yes. when it does, it's like, uh, luckily you managed to give the money back. Yeah, as well yeah, yeah. And I couldn't people. just keep, yeah. I, I would never just take money yeah. from people yeah. and not giving them anything in return. Like yeah. I want this to, like I want them to trust me. So yeah. in the future, if it is a better and like a way better um, platform, platform yeah. then they can be like, oh, okay, well, I know we can trust her yeah. and hopefully they'll come back. What what would you say is the biggest percentage if you have to organize, you know, like what what's the thing that makes you the most money? What's the second? What's the third? Like what's the order of it? Uh, it'd be fights. So fighting, sponsorship, and then... Uh, working through the gym and then me just selling merchandise. Is it is it like the PTs? The, the like not even close to the first one. What do you mean? Because I I thought you would be making more money out of PTs than, than fighting. Not than fighting, but like close like close to it, I guess. Uh, I think sponsors would probably go next because I get yeah, sponsors. Okay. Sponsors like I have, like I have a few. Yeah. So they all would pay me monthly, and then yeah, okay. that comes through, and that's that's good. Yeah, awesome. What when was the first time? that you received like a big enough payment, whether from a sponsor or a fight, that you were like, holy shit. This, like, this is getting real. Yeah, like, I'd I'm say my, my money. first boxing fight and I wasn't even making that much. But like, that's where my eyes like kind of opened up for the boxing world. I'm like, oh my God, this is my first boxing fight and I'm making like a couple thousand dollars. Like, yeah. I, made, I think I made four grand on my first boxing fight right. and I'm like, within... I've, I've never done boxing before and I've done it for three weeks and I'm making mm. more money than I ever have in my Muay Thai career. So yeah. for, imagine when I had my 10th fight, like I could be yeah. making 100,000 yeah. yeah. plus. I know yeah. one girl that's in a um, uh, big boxing promotion and she's, mm. I think, making, from what I heard on the internet, is she's making $80,000 a fight and she had five fights within a year. Yeah. What's that? Like four hundred thousand yeah. like dollars. It's it's a lot of money. Yeah, not even counting sponsors. Not even not even any, counting sponsors else. and that's and your platform like by then being hundred well. percent. Yeah, like that's that's serious money. That's awesome. I can't wait to see her like Same. get your one million check as yeah, well. Yeah, I want that one million check. That'd be nice. What what are the big goals that you have in mind for the future? Like what what are you hoping to achieve what do you want um so i definitely want to travel overseas that's like my number one for my career Mm -hmm. um i want to go to the states and i want to fight and um just learn boxing skills from where like where people make the most money so like america it's massive boxing Mm -hmm. is massive Mm -hmm. so i would love to um fight in america and hopefully fight on some really big promotions and then there's there's a few in mind that i'm thinking of like um Dazin is massive and that's a really good uh boxing promotion and mm-hmm. I, I know I can just I just want to be like successful like I I want to be successful in a sport and I want to be an inspiration for women and I want to show that you know women can really be just as good as the boys and we can make just as much money as the guys and I do really think that's very achievable mm-hmm. and 
yeah, I just want to, I want to be the best. I want to take over the women's women's boxing game. I've had three boxing fights, and I just want to get bigger and stronger. And I, I definitely think it's possible. And hopefully, one day, undisputed. And yeah, we'll see. Are you fully committed now with boxing? Like, has all the vision changed to just boxing, yeah. or are you hoping to do MMA? Yeah, just boxing because I was doing Muay Thai and that, and like just kept getting injured and stuff. And of course, injuries are gonna come wherever I wherever I go, mm. but I just and the injury side and then like getting if I get injured in boxing I can be still making millions whereas like I get injured in more time making like a hundred grand yeah like the most like yeah. it, what's yeah. what's better and it's like, more risk yeah, as well. yeah, yeah. yeah so just like thinking about like a real career and like a real lifestyle boxing is definitely mm. it's way more like more motivating and really achievable I, I know I can do it I know I can be one of the best females in the sport and we'll, we'll see I'll g give me five ten years and I think it's good uh, no one will even recognize me like yeah. it, it's gonna be cool I'm excited this came up in the conversation with your mom but I was like no no I want to ask her what about the boxing not this okay <laughs> <laughs> have you considered doing only fans oh my god and what did she say <laughs> <laughs> not gonna say you have to go lose it <laughs> Doing people ask me every day and you know <laughs> yeah. it actually kills me yeah. because i get punched in the face for a living yeah. and that shit hurts like yeah. it hurts yeah. and then you see these people like that cash me outside girl yeah. she uh, did it only fans within the first hour she i think she made seven million dollars yeah it's ridiculous like yeah, <sighs> yeah. but like of course i've thought about it yeah. i have but you know it's hard because I want, to be a prof I, want to be a I want I want to be a professional in the sport and I don't want to be the girl that's oh she's a girl that does only she's the boxer that does only fans I want to be the boxer you know mm -hmm. so it's hard but it's also hard when you see all these people just making bank I'm like but is that the easy way out like that's where I'm like is that just the easier way out and then I'm like okay I've got all this money but like what did I do where I'm working towards something yeah. to make the money oh it's so hard yeah that that's what I mean because like looking at it I'm like fuck you can make so much money so quickly like, I it, like i'm guessing also the percentage of dudes following you it's it's like ridiculous people so message me every multiple multiple people message me it. every single day yeah. only fans only fans only fans i'm like <sighs> it's so tempting yeah I, i've asked my mom and she's like give yourself a couple of years if you're not successful that's your last but then i see like some like inspiring women like Ebony Bridges for say like she's an amazing yeah, boxer and, and she it. she can throw hands but she's also making bank from OnlyFans yeah. and good on her. I don't like judge anyone that does OnlyFans yeah, yeah. and I won't judge anyone that sells yeah. feet pictures or sells whatever they're gonna yeah. do. Like <laughs> women make Have money. you sold pictures <laughs> of your feet? No, <laughs> but people that like you know people make their way and making money and they can get really successful from it. If that's the yeah. way you're gonna do it, then good on you. Do you, do you have many friends that do OnlyFans? Um, no, no, I actually don't. I was thinking in my head I do. I think I just follow lots of people that do. Yeah, because <laughs> I was like, like every... have you had a friend that told you like, like Jassy, just do well, it? Well, yeah. actually, I do know one girl. So a friend of a friend, mm. they her friend was trying to get like an apartment and stuff, and the people wouldn't approve her, and she had to go. She tried and tried and tried and tried again because the people wouldn't approve her because mm. people say there's not a stigma. There's no mm. is stigma. Is that the right word? Mm -hmm. People say there's not a stigma if you do OnlyFans or if you're a stripper or whatever. Mm -hmm. But there's definitely like there's... I don't find any judgment in it. I think do whatever the hell you mm. want, make mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. But like I think that people still do judge a lot of people for doing OnlyFans and um, like adult content. But mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's way more accepted. I think it's... Days. Oh, 100%. Like it's so normal. These I've days, met a lot of people. These that, that, days it's... Wet, but like yeah. for say for this girl, for instance, she couldn't in an apartment because they were like no we've looked who you are and we don't want that in our building we're a family yeah. we're a family at hotels or whatever yeah. it was and she struggled finding a home yeah i'm like but well, that's ridiculous because like it's so normal but yeah i don't know yeah because like on on one hand i guess from what you're saying it's like you you become a world champion but just earning kind of like your way through it and going through all the journey of not having the money and figuring the ways to make money but 
You also have like a little shark in there if you really want. I know, want it. it's so <laughs> yeah. tempting, and I'm yeah. like, oh my god, people like literally will pay for anything. It's so. Silly. Do you think your parents will get mad at you if you do? Um, I think my dad will be like, oh my god, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> but like you know, even yeah. like some of the OnlyFans, like they don't even post something that explicit, and they're still yeah. making yeah. like they there's girls like, it, like if I was to do OnlyFans, I wouldn't be doing like. Hard, hardcore, hardcore, nothing. right? Like, yeah, like it would probably, like you know, for maybe laundry or something like yeah. that. But like, that's that's, oh, that's too, plain. Like, like exactly. Like, but people yeah. make money from yeah. that. People yeah. make so much money. Like, go on most of the girls' only fans. They're not doing all of, like the real hardcore stuff. But like, of course, that is that big percentage. That like, like it's like I feel like it's fifty fifty. Might maybe less than. I have never paid for an OnlyFans or anything similar yeah. to that, and I think you have to be such a fucking loser to be doing that. Like honestly, I, as a man, I, you're <laughs> you're a fucking loser if you're paying to see a girl. Like I was just fucking- gonna say, I'm gonna be like people. No, okay, boys, not men. I have a. Sh- I don't. I am not. A this fan. man as well. I, I, well, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, you're not considered a man. I'm sorry. Yeah, the boys, not men. I say this a lot yeah. when I talk about like me with like arguing with guys and stuff, and guys being stupid. I don't think men are stupid. I think men are. We need men. Like yeah, men are sure. everything in this yeah. world. But boys, oh, boys are so stupid. Boys are so dumb. And I was gonna say, boys will pay for anything. Yeah, they will oh, literally. No. Oh shit, yeah. sorry. Yeah. yeah, they will. They'll pay for anything. No, like honestly, if you, if you're paying for that type of content, like you're you're fucking stupid. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> how much, how little respect do you have for yourself that you have to go and pay to see whoever girl, mm. like whatever, either naked or in lingerie. But like, honestly, it's how can you not get that? Like, I know. just go and get it for yourself I uh, know. outside. Like, and and even porn, porn, like. I think that's something that every man at some stage has to deal with, like yeah. they, like a, a season of addiction to it. Yeah. And, still, and now I look at it, I'm like, man, how fucking loser you have to be to be just jerking off on, yeah. on your chair in there. <laughs> <laughs> with, you know, like on your screen. Like imagine next time you're going to do it, just picture yourself doing it. Imagine if you were just there witnessing what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> like, you you look like a oh, loser. It's so odd. This world is so odd. <laughs> but yeah. you just kind of have to accept it. And you're like, oh, yeah. There's yeah. some losers in this world. <laughs> <laughs> there's some losers, but there's a lot of winners. Or oh, kind of. Maybe 50-50 again. Do you, do you even winners. reply to those messages? Like, no. like, like dudes just saying, like, no. hey, would you do this? Or would you... I guess they also... You get, like... PayPal stuff like no hey. no no yeah. I think I, I've been like I've been I, I kind of just section it out Instagram does a thing now as well it um folders out like inappropriate messages oh does it yeah so yeah, I okay. have like normal message my normal private what is it called message yeah, request DMs yeah so okay. you have like the message request and then I have hidden message requests oh, and it's okay. like it I like filter, that, it yeah. filters it out check actually because you might miss some not no oh, messages because okay. i was like Epic okay filter, going through yeah. but it filters it wrong because i have people asking me for shirts and stuff like that and i'm like oh my god i didn't see this yeah. but um yeah instagram's pretty good it like mm. filters mostly people out but i see them yeah. i do see them <laughs> <laughs> you weirdos <laughs> you say some weird yeah. shit yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. how much is your instagram account growing with every fight you have because i notice oh, yeah. every time you have a fight like it just gets yeah. boosted a bunch of followers oh but. since i went overseas like for the reality show and my followers gone up heaps of yeah, over a hundred thousand now which is super cool and my engagement is like a plus one million mm. which is really cool yeah so that's awesome that's really cool but if one million, why right, just follow me? Yeah. <laughs> just if you're looking in. at it, just follow just me. Follow just support, support, support the girl here. Come on. <laughs> uh, what What has been the best experience you have had so far with fighting? Um, I think. Like the coolest experience you have had. I've got to say the reality show. Like it was freaking traumatic almost really? it was really intense and like ask any intense, i intense want to make a sense. i want to make a podcast yeah with all of us yeah that were on the yeah. competition we, we weren't allowed to say show on the competition um and do everyone's thoughts and experiences because it was 
fucking insane. What, but what do you mean by insane? Like We were in a bamboo hut for seven, eight weeks and we weren't allowed to leave unless we were going for a run. The only place we got to go was to the fight and we weren't allowed our phones, we weren't allowed to contact our families. Um, our food was horrible we got literally given takeaway plastic boxes that had like this dry as rice and like oh it was disgusting so the food was torture um the training was just wild um i had to live in a room like the living with the girls was fine like i lived with it was six girls six guys we sectioned it off in like Mm -hmm. boys room girls room Mm -hmm. um and yeah it was just mental is it like a hostel like bunk beds so we were staying in like a it was like a resort, like it was like a villa. So mm. it's like, this is like the place, like mm. it's like quite big. Mm. And then we have like our rooms and mm. then we have like an outdoor area, mm. our kitchen, and then we have the gym. Mm-hmm. So everything was there, but we weren't allowed to get like outside food. Um, we weren't allowed to leave. Like if we wanted to like get supplies and that, we had like a little um, PA that would follow us around. And then yeah. we had to do two hour interviews every day or like an hour and a half interviews every day. Yeah. So we'd like live a day, do interviews, train, eat, sleep, repeat. Like I was having like three hour naps because it was like just... Nothing to do. Well, there was nothing really to do other than sleep, eat and train. Yeah, right. Do you had a good experience with But I had a good experience. I made really good friends with everyone on the cast. Yeah. Um, It was a once in a lifetime thing that like I'm so blessed that I had and I went through. But I'm like, would I do it again? Hmm. You wouldn't do it again. (laughs) I don't know. It was just wild. Maybe if the opportunity came up, I was like... But during it was like, this is insane. So was it, it, would you say the experience was cool just because of the people you got to meet? The experience was very cool. And like, I'm Mm. so grateful I went through it all. Mm. But yeah, it was wild. But also like we were on an island, like we were literally in the jungle. And like (laughs) when we went for our runs, there was monkeys. I got chased by monkeys. I'm not even lying. I have videos and like we were running and then there was like this family there was like literally i kid you not maybe 20 monkeys one side and then one side and like when they have their babies they're really like aggressive they're really yeah. aggressive Protective. so me and my girlfriend we had to run straight through the middle of the two monkeys yeah. or like 20 monkeys the two sides of monkeys it yeah. was like uh i don't know how to explain like we had to go through them yeah. and like we went through it, then all we hear is like this monkey like charging behind us it's got oh, his mouth no. wide, wide open <laughs> Don't I, make a i've never ran so fast in my entire life it was so scared i thought i was gonna die and yeah. ripped apart by a monkey <laughs> but i do miss the monkeys i do miss them yeah. they were so cute yeah so cute well how would you define success how would i define success hmm. um maybe like success in myself like being like it doesn't have to be millions of dollars and it doesn't have to be just like achieving all the things that I want to achieve like knowing that I pushed myself to my best ability and like I know that I didn't give up I think that success and me being happy within myself like not relying on other people for my happiness and I think like definitely being happy is being like successful because I think like yeah but I don't know how to explain it it's so hard because finding like happiness like in yourself is like a lot harder than I thought it was because mm-hmm. like like growing up I, I don't know like I guess I'm just I'm, I'm like a million miles per hour like I'm always doing stuff mm-hmm. so when I stop and like I'm like oh I feel like not really the best in my men's mental state so like talking to a, I got to talk to like a psychologist and doing all the mindfulness stuff so I think if you're happy and you've got a good family and you've got a good roof over your head and um you got like financial freedom, I guess that's success. And mm-hmm. I don't like, of course I've got goals and that with my boxing and like I'm going to do everything in, in my ability to get there. But if life wants to take me on whatever journey it wants to go on, then that can be successful too. As long as, long as I'm happy. I think I just, I, I, I just want to be happy. And I think that's um, my like biggest, biggest goal for like my life out of everything. I remember your dad saying in the documentary, I asked him, like, do you think it was kind of in the lines of, like, do you think she'll make it to a highest level and all this stuff? And he says something like, as long as she doesn't get distracted by stinky boys. <laughs> 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 like, have you had that those distractions? Are you fully on your own? Like, what what's that? side of jassy like relationship um, wise well i was in a relationship for like nearly three years and mm. that was great like during and mm. i had a really good support like 
we were very much supported each other during the relationship and that. Um, but like I kind of, I told myself like at the beginning of my relationship, like I want to be in this relationship. I don't need to be. But mm. then you get dependent. Like I think it's just a normal mm. thing. Yeah. So then like we had, um, our, like we parted ways obviously. Mm. And then um, I was like, oh, wow. I was really like depending on my happiness like through, because mm. I had, I was just so used to it. Yeah. So then like being on my own for like over, I've been, single for over six months now but like Mm. you have to be dependent on yourself your happiness comes from you you can't rely on anyone else for your happiness yes and like even if you think you're not like you need to take a step back and be like because we would spend every single day together and that was great and i absolutely Mm. love being with him and like i still love him now and Mm. i still wish him all the best but like it's just um yeah you have to really be like happy with yourself before you can love anyone else and that's a Mm -hmm. such a big Mm -hmm. saying and like people like just say it but like it's so true if you're not happy with yourself Mm -hmm. you'll never be happy with someone else Mm -hmm. and i think a lot of relationships and like i can't obviously give the best relationship advice but Mm -hmm. like people rely on other people to make them happy Mm -hmm. but you're never going to be happy if you like even people work with traveling for instance like they're like oh i need to go to this place to be happy or i need to be here Mm -hmm. to be happy i need to be here but no you need to be happy Mm -hmm. and then once you're happy everything else just falls into place around you Mm -hmm. and that's like what i'm starting to like okay like no matter like what i do i need to be happy like if i'm in a relationship i need to be my Mm -hmm. own source of happiness otherwise Mm -hmm. like no one's gonna give it to me and no one gives a shit at the end of like at the end of the day, it, all you have is yourself. Yes. So it's like, no matter if you have the best p- uh, partner in the world, and like, I'm sure lots of people do, but in the end of the day, no one makes it out of life. Like, you have to be, yeah. But like, you have to be happy with yourself. Yeah, that's a big mistake a lot yeah. of people make. And, and I've made it in the past as well, years ago, like just relying on someone else to be happy yeah. instead of finding happiness within. Yeah, yeah. and I feel like I... Because before I was in a relationship, like I loved being on my own. I loved taking myself to lunch. I loved going mm. to the beach by myself. Mm. I loved doing like going to the movies. Basically, I would do everything by myself. I'd go shopping by myself, whatever. And then when you got in a relationship, it's just normal like mm. relationship. Mm. Like Dynamic, you just roll yeah. into the spend every day together and like we were so obsessed we just never wanted to be apart Mm. so then when we weren't together i was like what do i even do when i'm on my own like i don't even know what to do when i'm by myself but whereas now like i found i'm finding myself again like i'm still finding myself Mm. but like yeah i know like i can go to the beach by myself i can go to the shops by myself i can do all Mm. that stuff again Mm. where like you lose that when you like really depend on someone Mm -hmm. so yeah i think finding like you need to find happiness with yourself. It's like such a big commitment in life and people just go straight past that, I think. Yeah. And yeah, I'm really grateful I realise that now at such a young age because when mm. I'm older and say someone does come in my life, not for a very long time, but, <laughs> but yeah. if someone does come in my life... Like She's I, not open to it. No, I, chill, chill. No, no chill. relationships. <laughs> Stop. I'm like, I'm, it's like so... And I think now it, like everything happens for a reason. And during when I break up, I was like, oh my God, my life is over. Yeah. What am I going to do? <laughs> yeah. But like now I'm like, okay, like this is a blessing in disguise. I can focus on myself. If I want to go to America tomorrow, like I could book a flight and just go yes. like, and of course, like when I was in a relationship, it wasn't like, you can't do this. You can't do that. But of course you have to like talk with your partner and be like, yeah. this is my plan. Yeah. This is what I'm going to do. Whereas now I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Fuck I'm it. doing this. Yeah. I can be spontaneous. I can do whatever I want. And I need that in my career yeah. because I'm like, if I want to, if I get a fight opportunity in America, but they want me there for three months before to do a training camp, like whatever Mm -hmm. it is, whatever the opportunity, Mm -hmm. I can take that if Mm -hmm. I want to. Mm -hmm. Like I can be spontaneous. And don't even think about it. I don't even think about it. Like I can just think purely of myself and I'm really enjoying finding myself and finding my own happiness and finding all these new opportunities and like it's it's such a different world but it's cool i really like it and and that's that's so good once like obviously it's not good when it happens but getting your heart broken like even a couple times i had my heart broken a couple times when i was younger and it just made me so much better in fact i was talking to someone recently that they're still no past uh, their ex you know they're still talking to him and all this stuff and i'm like Dude, stop it. Yeah. You need to stop. <laughs> Back to reality. Yeah. Yeah, red pill. Boom. Yeah, you, know, yeah, like, yeah. you know, like, and, and he's like, oh, but, uh, you know, like, I uh, still can't get past it. I'm like, what is she providing to you? Yes. What kind of value is she providing? Every relationship in your life is a value exchange. 
everything your friends your uh, your parents your uh, girlfriend your boyfriend whatever it is there is a value exchange yeah. so what is she providing to you and he tells me like oh you know like support and i'm like that's nothing that's a commodity it's, anyone i can yeah. give you support <laughs> anyone i'm giving you support everyone anyone can be, give you support it's like saying like oh he's such a nice guy That's, that's a commodity. Yeah. Anyone can be nice. Being nice is easy. What else does is he offering, you know, outside the norm? You know, being nice is the bare minimum Literally, entry level, yes. you know. So, like, it, but going back to it, like, getting getting your heart broken and then just working on yourself. Like, it, six months after your relationship, if you have committed to just work on yourself, like, improve your mind, improve your body, become a fucking savage, become, you know, smarter, wiser, um, financially uh, literate, and all these things, that, like, getting better friends, a better network, you should look back at that person and just be like, I'm so much better. Yeah. Why, why did I even choose this, this person? You know, like, I'm, like, I'm, not even the shadow um, yeah. of what I used to be. So you should become a so, so much better version of yourself that you're even like questioning why yeah. were you with that person in the past and yeah. you can get someone even better. Yeah, and I think that, like, I think it's a massive thing as well. Like, it's not necessarily that it was wrong, mm -hmm. but like, it's like life just wants to show you things like mm -hmm. what to be and like what not to be. So mm -hmm. when you, there was a lot of things that I took out of it and like, mm -hmm. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be where I am today. Like exactly. without him, like I'm now, I know that I'm strong and I know like I can be independent mm -hmm. and there's so many things that I take out of that. So yeah, I think life works in it's really weird ways. And sometimes the universe just like throws mm -hmm. a lot of curveballs in there, yeah. but that's what makes It's like the butterfly effect. Like yeah. without those time without, You're getting me this glass of water. Like, you know, yes. so many things can change. Yes. Like, it's cr yes. freaking crazy. So yes. always I'm be grateful. keeping you hydrated. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so always, like, being grateful for, like, whatever happens, even if it feels like the worst thing in the world, I promise. Like, there's some something magical out of it at the end of the day. So that's the way I try to look at it anyways. From, like, from your own career and your parents being world champions, what do you think are the three skills that anyone can implement in their own life to achieve anything they want three skill okay um that you're even like using these days in your own personal life to get the stuff that you want to get in the future yeah. i think definitely one the manifesting thing and like journaling every day like mm -hmm. when you journal every day you're like putting it out there that this is what you want to do like even if it's something tiny like um drink eight liters of water today oh is that a lot i don't know that's, that's a lot, yeah. that a lot that's of water? Like, <laughs> like like having like tiny little goals can make okay. such a big difference because it's like it's better than doing like you're doing something over nothing so mm -hmm. i mm -hmm. think journaling manifesting um keeping your health a priority by just yeah getting like eight hours of sleep and like mm -hmm. putting your well-being first mm -hmm. other than like the outside noises and like people being like oh let's go party this do that do this do that spend money and just mm -hmm. kind of putting making sure you have time for yourself i think people forget to like mm -hmm. recharge mm -hmm. their own mm -hmm. selves like there was a good thing i read on the internet the other day and i was like you wouldn't let your phone die like get to 10 so why would you let your brain get to 10 mm -hmm. like That's taking good. care of yourself first so journaling like manifesting taking care of your health and well-being um and surrounding yourself like with good people mm. i think that's so important i've been around people that weren't the best influence on me and then mm -hmm. i know how i felt around that i was always anxious i was depressed and i felt like shit and i, I wasn't motivated to do anything and then when you surround yourself that people that only want you to be successful you, you have no other choice than be successful so yes. it's like what would you rather yes. but you got you got to cut those ties sometimes and sometimes it's freaking hard because you don't mm. want to leave those people because you're comfortable and you're familiar mm. with those mm. feelings and those friends but when you surround yourself with the right people life is just gonna take take charge and do its own thing so yeah those maybe my three things yeah <laughs> and we hear that all the time right like your five closest uh, people will define who you are and where yeah. you go and all those things and it, it's a fact but most people just go past it like yeah. they, they're like oh yeah true the five closest people will define who i am and where i'm going and what kind of things i have accomplished and what do i have right now and all these things and then like yeah cool all right boys let's go out like you know like Seriously. and then you're like 
what, what are they all losers? Are they all winners? Like, are they all trapped in the system and you want to get out? Yeah. Like, you need to create your environment and your circle to a point where, you know, if you're just surrounded by winners yeah. and champions. Like, right now, these days, the only people I let into my inner circle are freaking go getters. Yeah. That's all I, that's all the people I talk to. They got, they, you know, one of my best mates. We just talk about money and yeah. goals and dreams and big things and, and things that if anyone listened to it, they will be like, these two are completely insane. Yeah. You know, or they will laugh because they in their heads, they think it's impossible. Yeah. You know, like I'm just exposed. And the more I do that, the more I create my circle, the more I meet crazy motherfuckers just like me. Yeah. And guess what? They're manifesting stuff as well. They're completely out of the system. Some of them are making 10 times more money than me and all this stuff. And I'm, it, it just shows what's possible, yes. you know, and breaking the limits. Like if I tell how much money, um, I have a, uh, a friend that was making half a million dollars with marketing. You know, if you tell that to a freaking engineer that's making maybe yeah. 150 or 200 or something and get and he's not getting tax. That's the other thing because he mm. has systems and he moved to a country where he's not taxed and all yeah. this stuff. And you tell that to the poor engineer or the dentist that is getting yeah. taxed, you know, like 50% or whatever it is at that stage. You know, they're like, how? They will, they'll think like, this. that's not possible. They yeah. didn't study my thing. You exactly. Know? That's impossible because he learned everything yeah. by himself as well. Yeah. Like everything is online skills. That's, that's amazing though. That's yeah. really yeah. amazing. Yeah, but until you have, you know, contact with these people and you start asking questions you need to be curious as well because i'm i i've seen people that maybe they get into the same room by accident or by luck or you know just get in the room with a millionaire and they don't ask questions they're just talking about themselves they're not listening to it like listen i'm so curious these days as soon as i meet someone that has may i have maybe a little idea that mm, that guy looks like he has financial freedom or he knows something i don't know about business or finance or anything like that i'm like hey what do you do how do you how do you get there i recently like on the weekend i met a a, a millionaire i'm like hey uh, like how do I get there? How do I make my first million? And I bet you no one has asked him that. Yeah, yeah. Like he, he, he looked at me and he was like, well, and then he yeah, just starts yeah. thinking about it, right? Because it, it's not a question that he gets often. I'm like, yeah, okay, what's the biggest loss you have had? And he told me that time that he lost 1.4 million. And you know, I'm, I'm like, just learning and gathering information so it doesn't happen to me. Yes, and also I can implement all this stuff to get to a similar position that yeah. he's in. So definitely create your circle and be curious. Get like, just talk to people, ask questions. Because the more you ask, the more you will find out. You can't find something that you're not looking for. Yeah. You know, or or even if you think it's impossible, if you're not, you can't. I was talking to this uh, to a friend about this. Like, you can't become what you don't think about. So if you're not thinking that you can become a millionaire, you will yeah. never become a millionaire because yeah. it's not even possible in your head. It's not even the idea, you know, it's not even in your brain that that's yeah. possible. So you will never become one. Yeah. You have to it, changing those little things of like, oh, you know what? I'm a millionaire. I can be a millionaire. Yeah. I will be a millionaire. And just start thinking about it and start talking to people that think the same way. They, guess what? You're opening the possibility for yes. it to happen. It's not going to happen by accident. You need to do You need to yep. put action into it. But that's the very, very first start. Starts all in here and then eventually you manifest it yeah. in the real world. 100%. What is one thing that people don't know about Jassy Bar? Oh, gosh. One thing that you, like, no, nobody knows so maybe people will never imagine that yeah about you oh my god i don't even know um i always when people ask me something they don't know i'm like oh, that i love to eat but i think everyone knows that now <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was like kind of like my but now i'm putting it so out there online like but i love eating out and i love spending money yeah. <laughs> that's, that's why i like to that's why i need to be rich yeah. that's why i need to focus yeah. and be on my on yeah. the right track because yeah i love um Oh, I want to be a professional mukbanger. If I, if I'm not, a, but see, do I do <laughs> I really do I do I really want to? Because if I really want to, well, I would have done it by now. But yeah. like in my head, I'm like, oh, yeah. I just love eating, and I love watching those. I love watching mukbangs. I love watching yeah, people right. eat. It's so satisfying. Wait, it's even in your Instagram bio. <laughs> like, yeah, I put, I put it in my Instagram. <laughs> I put it in my Instagram. I, I'm glad someone noticed. I put food. I was like, I have to put it in there because yeah. I want to make like I want to make 
it's like fighting and then also like food yeah vlogs and stuff like that like that's yeah. i'm trying to separate it a little yeah. bit i don't know we'll see i'm trying to post tiktoks too tiktoks is i guess the new thing so i'm trying to post on tiktok mm. and do little vlogs and stuff just when i'm away i can't maintain it every day mm. it's hard when i'm training and focused yeah. on the fight it, it's like hard to um i got like more focused things yeah. i have to focus on so but it's good i guess that's something people is is there um if you have to give one advice to younger jassy that maybe five years ago with all the information and the new knowledge that you have and the new life experiences what would you tell her to make her life easier and to help her achieve her goals and what what would you tell her um i would say to little jazzy i'd say uh i think little jazzy might no she wouldn't have known this then but just everything happens for a reason and there's a lot of things that are going to happen in your life and it happens it's it's I feel like um, we feel like when something bad happens that we're like the only ones, like you feel so isolated mm -hmm. and you feel like, why did this happen to me? My life is over. But like there's so many situations that happen to everyone. Like the, there's so many worse things that can happen to people. So just try and stay grateful and stay positive and just know that the universe works in its crazy ways and mm -hmm. everything's going to be okay and just going to keep pushing through and, You're going to be successful one day. And if you believe in it, like five years ago, I'd be like, I'm, I'm going to be successful in five years. And I am. I am mm. a lot more. I got a Jeep. I got a brand new car and mm. I got money coming in the bank and I've got a good support system. So give it another five years. Who knows? Like I, it's just going to be bigger and better. So I'm just stay positive. Yeah. And that's another great strategy. Start thinking instead of like, what can I accomplish this week, this month or whatever? Like, what can I do in five years? That's such a massive window to accomplish stuff. We underestimate how much we can get done and and make a reality in a time frame of five years. That's why I gave myself five years, you know, to be rich. And then that's just going to happen. That, like, yeah. I'm doing everything around. You know, what's the name of this plant? Of that plant? Yes. I don't know. Victor. <laughs> Because of victory, <laughs> everything around me has names of, of winning. That's good. That's that really one good. is called cash. Cash, nice. Yeah, the That's other really one good. It's called dinero, you know, which is cash in Spanish. Like everything around me is created for nice me plants. to win. Thank you. Yeah, that one's new, actually. Cash yeah, that's is a really new. nice one. <laughs> yeah, Victor, Victor has been doing great. It's actually, I love him. He's so vibrant. <laughs> He's so nice. Brings a good energy in the office. Jesse girl, if anyone wants to support you, follow you, stay tuned. If you if you jump in OnlyFans or anything oh, like God. that, where can they find you? Um, my Instagram is jazzypa underscore, or my TikTok is also jazzypa underscore. So, yeah, check me out there, and we'll be friends online. But have you got a fight coming up or anything? Uh, I was meant to have a fight January 25th, but I've had to postpone, unfortunately. So if you want to follow her, make sure to do so. Support your girl right here. Make sure to support your podcast the, at the creative grid on every platform um, at nail for life as well on every platform thanks for tuning in and we'll see you on the next episode goodbye to everyone bye thank you how was that good